Hey, Angel here, coming at you with a quick gluten-free cooking tip. I got these cool, cool, I don't know, tasty uh, and convenient gluten-free pie crust that I get at, uh, I was going to say Trader Joe's, but that is inaccurate. They're from Sprouts Grocery Market, and I've tried them before. They're really good. They're good for pies and for quiches, which is what I'm making today. And this one's almost done, so I thought I'd show you, especially with a gluten-free crust, you want to, uh, ooh, let me, let me turn on the light here, maybe that'll help. You want to be sh sure and cover the edges of this crust with a tin foil if you can, and then also with a quiche, when it's puffed up like that, see how it's risen like, like bubbly eggs? Then that means uh, the eggs are cooked in there now. I've got a lot of veggies in there and some meat. I've got uh, chopped steak and mushrooms and spinach and cheese and eight eggs in that pie crust. So um, it's pretty full and it might need a little extra time, but it's coming up on uh, 40 minutes. Well, 35 minutes because I did probably five minutes of preheating. So I might give it another five minutes, but I might just let it sit and... The other thing I wanted to show you, but I'm going to try not to burn myself, is this little this little container of water, which isn't ideal, but I got that idea because growing up we used to make custard, and anytime you're baking, which is egg and milk based, and anytime you are baking with eggs, it's not a bad idea to put a little pan of water or container of water, in this case in my little convection toaster oven. I use that tiny little little carafe of water. It's not a carafe, whatever it is. I, I can't remember, think of the word right now. There is a word for that little thing. Anyway, um, puts just a little extra moisture in the oven so that it helps the eggs not get too dry. And I can see already just from turning it around that there's a little extra moisture in here on the edge of that from uh, from the mushrooms and the and the spinach. You hear that? It's saying it's done up to. Uh, up to the time when I told it to be done. So I'm actually going to pull that water out because I tipped it over and then I'm going to actually, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just going to close it up instead of risking that. I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to put it back on for at 350 again for just about another seven minutes. Kind of, because I like my eggs well done, my quiche well done. I'm making this quiche to take snowboarding tomorrow, I hope. So anyway, it's a great, uh, great easy meal. It's cost effective. You can put whatever you have or want in there. I was going to put some chopped chicken and eggs, but I thought it seemed a little bit weird and chickeny. So I went with the steak because I happen to have both meats in my fridge this week, which is kind of unusual or at least a... Uh, for a while, haven't been able to afford some, so it's a nice feeling to be able to have a well-stocked fridge again and to be able to make a quiche to take and share with my friends and uh, I, and be able to eat myself because of the gluten-free crust. So anyway, I didn't walk you through making it, although basically what I did was buy this prefab crust, take it out of the freezer, put some chopped up frozen spinach, chopped up mushrooms, chopped up steak, and obviously you can put whatever you want. I scrambled up some eggs. I threw, uh, actually I threw a little bit of ch green chili salsa in there because I like that sort of thing. Just a little bit so it doesn't get too runny, although that's adding to the moisture. And a little bit of cracked pepper and a bunch of Mexican grated cheese and a little bit of extra sharp cheese because I decided I'd go a little heavy on the cheese to make sure it all sticks together and tastes good because I want to be well nourished for snowboarding tomorrow. Anyway, and then again, bake it at about 350 for in a convection oven or maybe 325 you know, depending on how you like to bake I like to go a little hard and heavy cover the edges with tin foil so you don't burn especially the gluten-free crust and put a little extra moisture in there if you can and then uh, let it cool well at least an hour and that's if you're impatient like me ideally like 12 hours in the fridge like by tomorrow morning when we go snowboarding it'd be perfect so anyway I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know and subscribe if you don't mind and share if this was helpful or you know anybody who would be helpful to. Let me know what your favorite quiche recipe is, what your favorite gluten-free crust is, what your favorite uh, snowboarding snack is. Any of those I'd love to know. Till next time, peace, prosperity, 
and possibilities.